Om den filmar eller inte, jag har ingen aning. Jag har aldrig filmat med den här. Oh, oh. When I started climbing and ever since, progression as an athlete has always been a determining factor to why I enjoy climbing so much. I began to go bouldering outdoors more and more and projecting became a massive part of this process and I discovered more and more and more new boulders to take on. Now some of these you might have been a part of and seen before, but others happened before I even knew how to edit a video. Now the biggest project that I've talked about on this channel probably has to be the big island. Last year I prepared for it, I set an indoor replica and I trained a ton. And in the end I had an absolute blast on the actual thing. The only downside was that I didn't get to finish the boulder, and so I planned to have a comeback this year. Um, well, we even booked a trip for December, but unfortunately I had to cancel this trip, and instead I started looking towards new projects here in Stockholm. <laughs> Then, even more unfortunately, we've seen more rain this fall and winter than I think I've ever experienced since I started climbing, which led me to, well, climb a lot indoors, and ultimately what we're gonna look at today. My new, let's call it Mega Ultra project. And today we're gonna have a look at, well, a session that turned out better than I first expected. So yeah, that's sort of a short summary of what this video is sort of gonna be about. Uh, my new, well, my new pretty massive project. And today I'm just gonna have a little bit of a session on it. This is literally Christmas Day. So, belly's full of cookies, but hopefully I can make a couple of good links again. I had a session the other day where I actually managed to get uh, every single link together. Essentially meaning that I got, um, like, so if I do this move, I managed to get it with this move as well. So like, that's a link, two overlapping moves. I managed to overlap every single move, but I didn't manage to do any overlapping, overlapping moves. <laughs> if that makes any sense. A Little bit of a goal would be to do that but it's just honestly not feeling great. I've had a bit of a warm-up and it's not the best session ever. Um, so I figured we could start off by kind of just breaking down each individual move so you sort of know what's going through my mind when I'm on them. And to start things off, the first move is just, uh, the first three moves actually are just bicepy and kind of, uh, they're designed to just tire the climber out more so than actually Uh, be difficult or hard uh, So they're in the lower range the absolute most easiest moves on the boulder uh, After you've gotten to sort of like a right heel hook of a slopey uh, a Very shallow sloper um, You you get prepared for the first real crux which is going off a um, left hand undercut and a right hand sloper that's like nothing almost it's like a slope pinch that's close to a nothing pinch apply a lot of pressure on the right heel make sure the body weight is high up to explode out to a pinch um, and the tricky part is getting this pinch with the right momentum because if you're going too low you might get to it but you're not going to be able to actually do anything off of it and if you go too high you're just going to fall right off so the trick is to get it with a perfect momentum so you can place your left heel on um, on one of the starting holes uh, where you can start applying pressure and sort of Uh, take a second to breathe and, and get ready for the next crux, which is a big power move. Originally, I had this move as a sort of, you went from an intermediate crimp uh, out left, but uh, I've ever since worked on it a little bit, so now it's just a pretty massive power move into a, uh, well, into two symmetrical pinches, where you kind of, you bite down with a lot of pin strength to hold on to them. Uh, from that position, you uh, move your hips on over to the left, to make sure you have the right, um, uh, just right position in order to explode into the hold on the stand start, which is a pretty good pinch. It's not the worst, it's not the best. Um, it's the best hold on the entire problem. Uh, and you sort of need it to just recuperate again for the coming part, which is uh, what I've already done. And uh, that's my stand start of the boulder. So on the stand start, You have these, like, you have the left hand low fur pinch and the right hand, um, right hand pinch, which is not terrible, but it's definitely not too good. Uh, you you position your body so you can do a massive crossover from a pretty deep tweak on the left foot. So you get the left hand up on a on a gas stunt crimp. You flip the right hand uh, into an undercut in order to maintain tension. 
And once you flip that hand, you can move your left foot up higher on a foot, uh, foot chip. Uh, so you can reposition your body for the final crux, which is a sort of dino to a sloper catch. So you dino to a right hand sloper and uh, just dig in with your lats, dig in with your arms and just uh, pull <laughs> as heavy as you can. Uh, and in order to actually stop this momentum, you catch the left hand as a sort of thumber. You catch the left hand hold with your thumb to just not explode off the wall, uh, which is the last real hard move. Once you have that sloper in control, you can move your feet up um, up on the holds again and start moving towards the finishing hold, which is a, <laughs> it's a bit of a, a gross match because I put a crimp there instead of a jug, but I feel, felt that it's, it's well-deserved for this type of holder. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of the breakdown of this masterpiece of a boulder. It's not actually a masterpiece, it's just pure freaking hard. And I think it could be the hardest boulder that I might have ever set. Like each indi individual move are not the hardest ones I've set, but linking these together is just... Ugh, that's, I don't know, I, I need somebody stronger than me to try that. But yeah, let's get into the climbing and, and try and make some good links happen. kind of the first little goal uh, so I mentioned before I've done all the links this link I technically haven't done it's more like a foot link I move, move my feet up all of these things but I haven't been able to do that and actually get into the gas on uh, to prepare for the hand flip so I really want to get that done because then it's like after that's done it's it's doable which means that it's time to start like really really projecting it and getting every detail in so first goal is to get that left hand in and uh, po uh, position myself so that I can start doing the hand flip. I don't really care if I do the hand flip today, just cause yeah, it's a hard move. I'm fine with not doing it just now, but the, the technical parts of getting the feet up, that's what I want to get dialed down. Um, so I'll give it another go right away. Okay, shirts off, extra power. Let's, uh, yeah, let's get this done. That was sort of the last last bit, like actually getting that steadily. Cool. All right, I have an idea. So there's, the way I'm gonna work this boulder down is by getting one link where I'm, I go from the start and into this these two. Like that's a really hard, hard boulder. Maybe that's like climbing, uh, I don't know, AB or something. Getting in, Getting that entire sequence in and then from these two to the top is like another i think we we talked about it a little bit and we were like starting off of these getting to the top is like a hard 8a plus maybe 8b so if i can do it from these two maybe a solid 8b or something then if i can do those two links those two individual boulders and just mash them together then maybe the entire thing will get a lot closer uh, so i think next step in this little process it's going to be to just try it a little bit from the start. Try and get all the way up to this one. That'll be the next goal for this session. Psyched! Psyched! So, uh, this will technically be the first, like, red point burn. Because I am going to try and get as far as I possibly can. If I get close to the top, then I'll just keep on going. Um, realistically, my goal is to get to this one. <laughs> <laughs> but you never know. Sometimes you just have those burns where you're just like, you get that perfect flow and it... Yeah, and it just works itself out. Oh, okay. Come on. Yeah. Ah! Woo! Yeah, it's a good first effort. It's definitely. <laughs> yeah, it definitely takes just a lot more power 
than honestly what I'd expect, like doing each individual move. It feels like this boulder should be doable in just a couple of, maybe a session or something like that. But when I start linking them together, it's bananas, is how I'd call it. This one is it's decent enough so you can sort of, you have a little bit of, of leeway and, and or uh, leverage with it. But it's not easy unless you're, you can, unless you get it perfect from the get-go. These holds are actually, I think, some of the oldest ones we have. So the texture isn't perfect. It's not like uh, these. They're just like two years old or something. And still have a lot of friction. All right, second go. Do this. No! no. <laughs> oh. In my defense there, like the heel slipped off and I think it's because these are my oldest pair of the drones and they're a little bit worn out so I didn't feel the same amount of pressure as I usually do. Yeah. I'm gonna switch real quick and then just give it another burn right away because that felt really freaking good. I had this, this first compression, like I, I felt like I was in full control and even going for it, I felt the momentum was there, I think. So if I just gotten a little bit more pressure of the heel, tense my butt a little bit more, use my hamstrings a bit more, and just getting that little bit of an extra edge of having a better shoe, I think I would have, I would have nailed it. Next burn. Oh. It's not going great. The thing is like, this heel, it's just so ridiculously shallow but I have to g just drive everything of my glutes just into it and just rotate the hips. And I have quite stiff hips. So it requires a lot of, of power to actually like get any good usage of it. Oh, it's like every attempt it kind of burns there. And I, but it's also kind of nice cause you're just, you know you're getting more flexible and you're just pushing through the pain a little bit. That's probably not great, but it feels good. Oh, I'll give it another burn right away. Oops. <laughs> beep beep. <laughs> uh, it's like uh, it's like I lost this move. The one where I go up here. It doesn't feel like uh, like my body really knows what to do there. I mentioned before that I was in the right. I was like, I felt that I was present. I know exactly where, where I had the compression and that I knew how to go. That's just all gone on these two attempts. So I'll try that individual move again. I could try the second link going off uh, this into this, into this. I'm switching back just because, oh, clearly it didn't help switching shoes. So I think I only have my strength to blame and it did feel better with these. I think if I'm if I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna have to do what I did when I was warming up, which you guys didn't see. What was it that I did before? Uh, Pump some adrenaline, folks. <laughs> uh, actually, like, kind of my uh, secret trick when I'm alone in the gym or when I'm out on the crag and you know there's no one around that I can disturb, is to just let all the emotions out and just try and pull really freaking hard and scream with the moves. And it does actually help with just getting more energy out from through my muscles. It's a super strange feeling. I don't know if anyone can relate to it even just because, but I think that's something why you ha have all of these Chris Sharma and, and Adam Ondra roars that you hear in the movies. It really does make a difference. Uh, and I will prove it to you. <laughs> Let me prove it to you, folks. <laughs> That's kind of ridiculous. It is ridiculous to me how it actually... I mean, it's like that with every single placebo 
and weird thing you do. It's always hard to explain why it makes such a big difference, but for me, I've never, I've done, I, I did that, as I mentioned earlier, I did that link, those two moves, once when I felt in like perfect shape. Today, I'm definitely not there. It's, I feel okay strong, but not peak performance. You know, when you have that extra low gravity, insane day, this is more like a, it's a session like every other session. But then if I just tap into that roar, for some reason it just works. I, I think I'll do the same from the from the sit. Yeah. Try and just roar my way through it. Do it. It's way more fun to watch as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, that's I, I want to hear that from you guys. Do you think it's more fun to hear the like psyched roaring every motion that's let out, or is it more <laughs> more nice to just have that kind of casual vibe going on where we <laughs> just climb and enjoy it and not try and just like summon every part of our muscles? Let me know in the comments below. Um, I'll comment. All right. <laughs> Another burn, another burn. Ah! Ah! Come in. Come in. Follow up. That feels good. Now we're starting to get close to the red point zone where for me, it's like, so right now, what I'm doing is more what I'd call projecting. Trying to figure out exactly what I need to tap into to do each individual move. And my mindset is really not towards actually sending anything or like accomplishing, well, you know, the entire thing. Oh, this is good though. This feels, I usually don't get like super stoked when I'm indoors. I like, I love climbing indoors, but I like more just varied moves and trying everything I see that looks fun. But projecting has never been a much much of a part indoors for me. Uh, but this little bad boy is really getting me wild and going. So that's nice. He's really good. But yeah, I feel like once I've done this, now I've done a pretty massive link. Once I've done the next one, then it's time to start red pointing for real and like tap into that side of myself. All right, I think it's time to try the second link. I'm gonna start off with this the big pinch, yeah. the other big pinch, and try and get. <clears throat> Ideally, I would try and get into the uh, double under or like the compression yeah. from these two. If I could get there, that's a really good link. Uh, if I could get to the top, that's an even better one, of course. We have to be realistic, and uh, I think that's my limit right now. No. 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 You know what? I'm gonna dial it down a notch because this is otherwise I'm just gonna get fatigued for a week. I'm gonna try and do the stand start, which I have done once. It was extremely hard and I had to pull with everything I had, but it did go. So I'm gonna try the stand start one more time or a couple more times, which means that this foot sequence I can work on some other time. But yeah, stand start. I want to dial that one down for today as much as I can. That's what's next. Okay, time for some good old fashioned rage. Ah! Wait, wait, I, I didn't get that expression. Essentially, uh, the flip move is like one of the more technical and hard ones, but it's like if you position yourself correctly first It's not super difficult But it's really hard to get that perfect tension in first and as soon as you start flipping it You're exploding off the wall. So you have to get it really quickly as well um, But it did feel good it felt yeah, I feel like the stand could actually go today again That'd be cool Really cool. Nice. I got the left hand uh, on the wrong wrong side, a little bit far, far, too far to the left. You have to get it uh, at a very specific point where you can engage your thumb underneath and just nerd your way through to get like a nice pinch. Otherwise, you're just getting a crimp of it. 
and that means you keep on rotating with the pinch. I can sort of the, pull myself back towards the wall. And then with this thing. Which thing? This pinch right here yeah. that I flip from. Um, that one's also maintaining the rotation so that I can, uh, from the tweak, rotate it back and then flip. But if I, if I, if I just keep on going, then, I've, uh, then I lose the left foot. So I have to flip at a very specific point. If I go, if I wait too long, then it's a teach you. Um, two minutes rest and a little bit of cooling the fingers. Yeah. Yeah! Yes. Yay! Progression. I think that's gonna be the perfect time actually to call it quits. Oh, that felt good. That felt real good. It's actually, that's three links now, I think, that I've done it in. And that's progression still quite far from doing the entire thing it's kind of what I love about it as well it's just uh, yeah feels good <laughs> um, so anyways I want to talk about something real quick I've been uh, lately having a little bit of trouble with like uh, some motivation as I'm sure a lot of people are and I've come to the conclusion that I want to try something that I did on my Instagram two years back or something when I started it um, which was to I had like these 30 day challenges where I tried to learn a five second front lever, uh, some muscle up in rings, and uh, I wanted to do something here in the same spirit. So what I want to do is just, I guess I want to reach out to you guys and if you have any good suggestions or something that I could try and learn in say 30 days, like I don't want it to be a lifetime project, I just want to learn a new skill because I think that's a lot of fun and it gives me motivation for training. So if you have any good suggestions, then please drop them in the comments below. If there's one I like, or if there's one that's popular within you guys, I'll uh, I'll try and get it done in 30 days and have that as sort of a challenge. Yeah, I think we're gonna wrap up everything here. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And again, if you have suggestions, drop them in the comments below. Uh, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you later, folks. Bye.